Welcome back, y'all. Yahtzee. I've missed you. I've missed you. I'm I'm here at Ibble. It's it's the new Neverland. We we never grow up here because we're always talking about really cool shit. And today I have an awesome guest. She is a powerhouse. She's six feet tall in her flats. Okay. She will tower over your ass when she's on stage. Yes. She's a stand-up comedian, a fucking headliner. She's going on tour soon, kicking off things in Illinois, coming back here to Austin, Texas to finish things out. Can't wait for that sold out show. She's a mom of six. Don't know how she does it. And she's here with me today. Jen Fulweiler. What's up? I am so excited to be here. You're so fancy. This podcast is very fancy. I just hope I can hang here. This is just, this is very fancy. The podcast is fancy. I'm not fancy. <laughs> I Let's know, reframe. You are. You are. You're incredible. I, I put heels on today. Oh, to maybe come close to, like, go a little bit above my shoulder. I like, thought yeah. so. I would try. I would try to get up there, not like Danny DeVito and Arnold. I have often debated, is it rude if I wear heels? Because they make me 6'4". And so I, but I like the look of, I like the silhouette of heels. I just didn't know if that'd be rude to walk Wear around them. being six, four everywhere. Except that one time that you punished yourself on purpose. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. In the grocery store. Yeah. You put heels on. It, it was more, I was trying to get used to the heel wearing lifestyle and that was a failed experiment. I ended up <laughs> hobbling around and at Walmart, <laughs> which is so lame, hobbling around Walmart. I can't even wear heels at Walmart. I felt like I am officially a Walmart person. I'm just hobbling over. I was like Quasimodo pushing my cart around. I had imagined I would be very glamorous and sexy at the Round Rock Walmart. And oh. instead, I just like Quasimodo around the store and like walked out barefoot and burned the bottom of my feet. Yeah, well, dude, don't matter what kind of footwear we're wearing when we're looking for a sale. Yeah, I know. The well, kids it, have summer break. Yeah, yeah. They all need flip flops. I mean, Walmart prices are such like I, you know, I COVID did hit me hard. Not so bad that I have to hit the sales at Walmart. You know, usually I can pay full price at Walmart because I'm I'm rich. You yeah, know? I'm so <laughs> I'm rich, Walmart bitch. rich. Yeah, dude, you are. I'm like, I don't even need a sale. Look at this. Toilet paper for six ninety nine. I can just I can just pay that. I can. Is that what? How many rolls? I had probably two at this point <laughs> with inflation. I haven't. I'm gonna be surprised the next time because I'm very dainty with my TP. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't think it's like subconscious. I just you know some yeah. people use a fuckload. I'm right. like Jesus, dude. Do you need that much? You gotta conserve. Yeah, these days. So yeah. I do. I've been on a twelve pack for like six months, oh but gosh. I'm thinking the next time I go out there to buy, I'm going to, I'm. it's going to be serious. In my house, a 12 pack is like, it, it lasts a, a couple of days. Yeah. If that, yeah. You got eight asses in your house? Yes. Correct. And f how many boys? Three total. My husband and two sons. You're like the girls. Using yeah. Work, right? I know. Yeah. We, we go through it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm a paper towel junkie more. Yeah. Sorry, environment. I know. Just, the, the environment needs to take one for the team. I, I have friends who not only do they replace paper towels with uh, rags or whatever, but they are you familiar with family cloth? Do you know what this is? What is that? What what Mowgli wears in his little britches? I wish. I <laughs> wish that were the case, Lauren. It's, it's nappies. It's they don't use toilet paper. What? And yeah. And so you wipe with it everything, no matter what you've just done in the bathroom. You wipe with the family cloth. Google it. This is a real thing. I know people, I follow people on Instagram who do this. And then you put it in the family cloth bucket to be washed. Okay. There's, I, I would need an incinerator. I mean, then it would just be not good for the environment because I'd have to incinerate everything that was touched by the family cloth. Like it's, so, the, the environment just has to take one for the team the when it comes crest. to toilet paper, paper towels in my house, family cloth. So- is this a, is a mode of sustainability, uh, like the people who do the, com what is it, composting, composting and stuff? Well, no, but they don't put the family cloth out in the compost pile. Here we go. They wash family it. Cloth. They wash it. Can you imagine doing a load of laundry that it, that, and people have been using those cloths for that? That's 52 bucks right there. But you got to wash all those. I love how they fan them out to make oh. them look pretty. Like, here's a little bow oh, on your TV. And you just think, oh, the, it's, yeah. No, I follow people on Instagram who do this. Well, that's one way to get COVID. Right. Exactly. You're just sharing yeah. ass viruses, uh, even that's though we have yeah, the same right. blood. I just feel like I would not trust my washing machine to get that done. You know, I, I'd have to boil it. I, I mean, it, it would the water would have to be boiling at the highest temperature for five hours I couldn't be the one to wash it. There's no way I would ever believe that that would be clean again once I know that, you know, one of my friends has come in and 
What oh. about the washing machine itself? Yeah, right. That has to go. That has to be thrown in the incinerator. They're like, no, we actually use a washboard outside and uh, yeah. we turn the butter and yeah. family caught. Man, you just no. taught me something new, something else freakish. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to start your podcast no, off with No, that's amazing. I want to know. I'm not wiping my ass the right way. Right. Some people, <laughs> I ask guys who I date, I'm like, which way do you do? I know people that do it from front to back. Oh. Or is that the opposite way? I'm from like, are back you just to front? Yeah, the wrong yeah. way. Yeah, the wrong way. Yeah, yeah, very unsanitary. Like Jews, yeah. we read from the other way. That's fine. But oh, like, that's right. That's right. There are there are a lot of ideas about that, which are good. There are which always are a lot of ideas yeah. about everything. Yeah, <laughs> apparently about your sanitization <laughs> for your tukus. But that's good. That's a good thing. My God, how did the Christians lose that? I don't. You know, like, why I don't didn't know. we jettison that? <laughs> it's interesting you brought this up because I was just I just got back from California. And I was with one of my best friends from high school, and she's talking about her cousin whose wife is pregnant and how she's planning on doing her birth, her birth plan. And when the baby comes and there's they're not they're going to be cloth diapers is what she's going to use. So this kind of sounds like the family will do that for a day. (laughs) Right. No uh, electronics. Uh, She's not going to doctors, obviously doing this home birth thing. All right. Uh, all right. All yeah. of the above. Yeah. Doesn't even talk about the birth with any other family members. It's not a topic of conversation because she doesn't want to be infused with other opinions. Get in touch with her inner warrior yeah. goddess. And this yeah. was my friend, my best friend who's telling me this is the one she is only ha- she just had a child a year ago. Yeah. And did not do the epidural thing. Yeah. She purposefully chose that. And it's a new trend right now that women are going out and renting Airbnbs for their home births. Ooh, if I owned an Airbnb, I'd be like, nope, not. (laughs) So watch out, Airbnb owners. We know Uh -uh. y'all are up to some kinky shit, too. That's actually, yeah, because people rent it for sex parties, too. And it's you actually maybe you could get the same one nine months later. It's, right. It could just it's, be for the whole circle of life. Thought we come back. <laughs> yeah, then rent it for a week. I mean, you right. get you get the whole circle of life at one Airbnb. It's such a liability. Hi, we're here for That's... vacation, but I'm going to be popping out a kid later tonight. Well, also not going to tell you. You don't know when the baby's going to come. I mean, babies don't arrive on time. It's that you don't tell the baby. Well, we've got the Airbnb scheduled at this. You know, you don't know when the baby's going to come. I, 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 I mean, I just think there's so many problems. So, of course, this article I'm reading is, yeah, some were successful. Others are not. And so I was like, well, I'm in Texas now. I guess I'll have to run out an Airbnb for my abortion. Wow. Yeah, I didn't. People are, they're taking this Airbnb stuff too far. Whatever happened to just getting drunk and having parties? Like, why can't you, you know, why yeah. can't you use an Airbnb for that? Well, then now there's a new app for, it's called Swimply. There's billboards oh, all over oh, town. You can rent pools. Who wants, if you have a well, house nice enough with a nice pool, you want trailer trash coming in for how much ever you're charging? I mean, do you get to use the bathroom? I have so many questions. Like, where does okay. your access end and where does it start? True. However, if I were on the other end, if I were renting it, that would look really cool to kind of imply that it's my house. Yeah. That would be, I mean, I sort of see. That's one you could really do for the gram. Just rent a place with an incredible, like an infinity pool that overlooks the city. Just, yeah, reading a book this weekend. This is what, But I guess you have people Airbnb your house, but it's just your pool. You're renting the pool. Wait, wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. Delayed reaction. Yes. Because I'm still, I'm still thinking Airbnb. This is called Swimply and it's come rent just, so I guess you just have to stay in the backyard. Is there, like, do you just piss in the yard? Do you pee in the pool? Like, where's the bathroom you go to? Oh, yeah, because if you don't provide them a bathroom, you know where they're going to the Yeah. (gasps) No. I need to get on the app just to to know. Are there Jewish laws against this? I feel like there should be. That you just, you just, you let other people who are definitely peeing in your pool swim in your pool, and then you go swim in it? No. It's sterile, right? No, I don't, I don't believe that. For, there's no well if you're a family that wipes your ass with the same cloth you're yeah, definitely all true. peeing yeah, in the yeah, same yeah. pool Absolutely. and it's fine so yeah so what the regular family is home and I you just guess. have some people who just show up and they're Dude, just being you pull your up pool? swimply real quick i'm just curious how this works i have yet to make an account but i would like i like a comedian recently messaged a bunch of comics and said hey let's all go to hot yoga and then rent this pool afterwards <laughs> and you're like but what because going we're comedians on in the house? Yeah, book the perfect day. So I think it's like Airbnb for just pools. Nothing makes sense about this. But but yeah, why not just Airbnb? 45 period. an hour. Okay, so, okay, wait. What It's can, crazy. Like, can we see do they have something about bathroom use on here? Well, okay, no smoking. Pets That's not, not allowed. 
restroom avail a oh, restroom available. Um, slip away to the quaint outdoor oasis nestled in the heart of Oak Forest. Spend the day soaking up the sun or enjoying a relaxing evening. And and while the family watches you, I have fences and shrubbery that make it hard for neighbors to peer. You know, <laughs> oh, oh, so this is a known issue. <laughs> But on the other hand, I'm going to be in my house like a creep do you, watching everything. That's, Lauren, you're reading my mind. Do you know how many um, voyeur perv weirdos are renting this out just to peep yes. at people who are renting their this pools? This is a problem. Oh, look at Dan. I don't want to stereotype Daniel P, but, you know, he's uh, this guy who's renting out his pool. I, I don't know. Like, he's. So these people that are renting him out are people who are t- don't. They're too poor because they don't have a pool, right? Right. Or they can't afford to stay in a hotel that they has They can't afford one. an Airbnb. Because here's the thing. these the comparable, A comparable value of the Airbnb, it's like a hundred. Third time back at this pool. Oh, it's like the no. YMCA. It's like, it's like 10 or 20X what it is to rent the pool. So, I mean, I think the family, they're there. Wait, what's this one say? Great community. What about dog barking? It was adorable. And the host even put up with our dog barking. Didn't it just say no pets oh, allowed? I, I want to see the ones with bad reviews. That's that, a, that would be incredible. It's you know? all five stars. Who the guy in the house was naked, looking through the blinds, touching himself the whole time. <laughs> but, you know, he never said that wasn't part of the terms and conditions. So we had to just These swim people all have to be paid. Definitely will book this pool again. It's so accommodating. Our engagements was so gracious. He provided towels. That's nice. And uh, little things like sunscreen and mosquito repellent. But so the guy who owns the house walks out. Like, hey, guys, here's your towels. Have a good time. I'll just not- be in here. Watching oh, okay. Netflix. Just okay. kidding. I have all my TVs up with cameras of every angle. So go ahead and I'm yeah, so shag in my pool to this business model. I I, I just what's so next opposed to this? Come yeah. rent my home gym. Yeah. Come rent. Yeah. I mean, what? I don't even know. Come rent my porch to come sit rent on, my drink nursery your for your baby because my, you yeah. can't ha- afford a crib. Yeah, I am very opposed. <laughs> This. It seems like there's like what could go wrong. So yeah. many things. This is, you know, I would like that marketing list, though, because everyone who has ever signed up to provide or use this service is an extreme extrovert. <laughs> there is not one introvert who has ever thought this was a good idea. It is actually pathological extroverts and exhibitionists and pervs and voyeurs who sign up for this. So you could actually market to those people pretty effectively because you know a lot about them. Sure. You know? It's like, oh, you want to run yeah. a background check on the guests coming? I want to know about the guy who's hosting this right. house. Yeah, yeah. Run a background check on that. I'll dude. be Googling you. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. I want to read all of your reviews. <laughs> My friend from San Diego, she lives in Chicago now. She just came through to do to do a wedding in Austin. And uh, her friends checked into the Airbnb first before she arrived in town. And they're, you know, getting settled in the place and Suddenly, the girl looks up from the bed and she sees what's supposed to be a smoke detector. She's like to her boyfriend, doesn't that look weird up there? I mean, sure enough, they go up there. It's a camera. No. They called the cops, bounced, reported him to Airbnb. I'm like, you need to call Tim Dillon and get this into his Airbnb saga. With oh, his yeah, stuff yeah. From Joshua one Tree. of my favorite it's things. It's the best. Mila. Ever, right? Mila. Mila. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what does he call them? The desert lesbians? Desert dykes. The, yeah, yeah. That's God right. God bless him. He's As a national only treasure. Tim Dillon could say. And, the, oh, okay. So, wait, is she, what's so they going didn't on stay now? There. They didn't stay there, obviously. So, before Jessica got in town, hey, Jess, I love you. Um, yeah, she just told me about this last night because we missed each other. And I didn't, and apparently they had this Airbnb saga when they first got here. And they said, oh, yeah, they certainly, they went around the whole house and saw so total voyeur situation. Whoa. So, yeah. Uh, next time you Airbnb, check it would your be shit. tempting to do a couple of weird and unexpected things just to mess with the people before you call the cops. Like, pretend that you're committing a murder or just something yeah. to freak them out. Pretend that you're stealing. I, I feel like you, I'd have a little fun with it before I called the cops. Yeah. Just a little bit. Definitely. I, I mean, I, I think I would do because it's just too good. Wow. So, yeah, I guess she's never renting an Airbnb again. I don't know where I forgot where she said they ended up. I think they went to another Airbnb because you, know, you can literally yeah. find them day of. Yeah, you can rent a pool. day. I of. always feel like I kind of need to work out, get in shape, 
before I go to an Airbnb in case there's a camera that I didn't catch. You know, because like my my husband is always like, you should cover up the cameras on your phone in case the Russians are spying. And I thought, well, it kind of motivates me to like look my best and live my best life. I don't want them to be bored huh. if they've hacked my camera and they're watching what I do. You I've know, been I'm so hacked. Taking my life to the next level. I wonder every time, like, I, yes, click on porn. I'm like, my Instagram's <laughs> yeah. getting fucked today. Today's the day that <laughs> right, yeah. Lauren Jameson underscore comedy is going to be born. And yeah. Every, yeah. Hey, help yeah. me with my new ambassadorship right. or whatever messages I've been getting from all the guys that work the doors at the comedy clubs here. I'm like, you've been watching a lot of porn yeah. lately. Yeah. You're lonely. You're lonely. It's mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people <laughs> probably got to the last page during the pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> they saw the last page. The category is Latin X. <laughs> X, X, X. X, X, X. That's what that means. Yeah. Latin X. Oh, Come on, guys. Oh, now, now we're on to let's it. Not, yeah, yeah. Let's not call it that. Let's think of something else. That was one of my, uh, do you know, uh, mm, is that comic's name? Eddie, not Eddie Izzard. I'm blanking. Is he local? Or He's no, an LA there, comic. This is a big Oh. He does that joke where he says about the movement, uh, hashtag me too. He's like, before it was a hashtag, it was pound, pound me too. <laughs> Might want to think of another movement, ladies. I'm like, isn't that great? Oh, wow, that's good. It's literally good. right there in front of our face. That's good. Pound me too. I'm a victim. When he wrote that joke, he had to think, I bet someone else already wrote it. Because that's one of those ones that you write it and you're like, this is so good. But that, that's awesome. That that's what I thought about. Ugh, I don't post my stuff. And I did it. I started doing a joke about Amber Alerts, getting shit in the bed. There's a new Amber Alert in town. And sure enough, saw a comedian, tweeted it, and then posted it on their Instagram. I'm like, God. Yeah. God, uh, they move fast. I know. I said it first. I know. I thought someone was ripping me off because their joke was so verbatim. And I was all wound up. And then I, I double-checked my Instagram. And I had never posted that clip yeah and I thought, okay well unless they were at that one random club i guess they're i guess we just had the same idea and phrased it the same way parallel thinking yeah we we say it in such an elegant an elegant way kind of like the way you said voyeur you said yeah. that very sexy like oh i actually yeah would be I, into just, that. I forgot the exact pronunciation i don't use that word nearly enough i'd like to remedy that um so yeah i just was unsure of have you had situations you've been in this game longer than me where you've had to contact a comic or something like that has happened where there's been some joke thievery and you've had to take stance not yet i think because there aren't a lot of people in comedy who speak to my perspective mm. uh, not a lot of other people are ripping off my jokes about having six babies in eight years um and I'm right about, behind you yeah and about living in a 1900 square foot house three bedrooms with six kids and a one-eyed cat and a dog <laughs> uh, you know not a lot of people are competing for that uh, demographic that life story so i actually i haven't had a lot of issues of covering the same no one's stepping on your toes <laughs> yeah, much yeah 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 i did one time i i did talk about because i mean the um the experience of going to chuck e cheese is such a horrifying experience i think anyone who has ever been there it's it's just it's so ripe with comedic potential i have seen two <laughs> other comics do bits on Chuck E. Cheese that were so similar to mine. I was like, is that, uh, that's that. I mean, it really makes me wonder, you know, if they Are saw they it. Parents? But then I was like, uh, one of them, one of them is, but one of them isn't. Which, you know, now that I look back, I'm like, why are you a 26 year old single guy and know so much about Chuck E. Cheese? He's like, their pitchers like, of beer really good minute, deals. Wait a minute, yeah. Uh, right. I like to play yeah. in the ball right. thing. Right, yeah, exactly. It's just like the, it's the ball pit. We you know? survived that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Many a play place at Mickey D's. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. dove headfirst in that shit and I swam in it. No, I'll eat my fries, my dirty 1600 chemical fries later. I'm busy collecting. Yeah diseases and and, and i do get it i mean i would love to do like a zip line over a ball pit and fall into it i mean i i get that but uh it, it just made me realize okay i guess this material is a little done if i keep thinking that people are ripping me off maybe i need to just find why don't subject matter. we go on swimply yeah get a oh, bunch yeah. of those plastic balls yeah, from yeah. china okay put up a little zip line tree to tree and we'll just do it at someone else's pool perfect yeah, because they don't say you have to swim in it. You right. can do all sorts of stuff. Don't pee in it. Don't yeah. fuck in it. Yeah. And then the guy comes out. Well, they out. don't say that. That's not in the terms That's and conditions. That's not in it. Yeah, so. I got to get an account. I don't know. I think, yeah, Will you right. come with me? Let's read the terms. Because they, they probably had to find a way to list all the stuff you can't do in that pool. And I'd love to know how their attorneys 
phrased that. Yeah. You know, I would love, yeah, the attorneys yeah. for Swimply. Yeah. Seriously. And then, you know, I mean, you have and to. You know, there's some Christian Swimply couple that's like, only if you're married can you fornicate. Or I guess it would be right. <laughs> only, yeah. Only if you're married can you have sex in our pool. Okay. Yes. With sacks on. Yeah. With the whole. Right, right. Old school. Yeah. yeah. Just be modest. Modest. No bikinis. Yeah. Right. And then you're you're out there doing your thing and <laughs> someone comes out and try to break up your party and you're like, what do you live here or something? Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's happened. What's your problem? You know that's happened. You're ruining my time. I spent forty five dollars an hour for here. We need a for this resort lagoon like pool. We need a reality show where you and I go to different Swimply rentals across the country. <laughs> Let's do it. That would be incredible. Like I go will. to some really bad part of town and and rent a, a Swimply, and it's just like outside of some guy's trailer. It's an above ground pool. It's like really warm. It's just from his hose the water. Oh my god! That's <laughs> why like was this only three dollars an hour? Annette Benning in yeah. American Beauty when she's trying to sell. I oh, will sell this house yeah. today. Yeah, I will sell. And yeah, and then all the people are coming in. They're like, this ad said this pool was lagoon like. Right. There's no. Is this not, I, can, I got some tiki torches in the garage, you know, is that? It's a uh, lagoon. She's yeah. like, this just looks like a hole <laughs> with water in it. <laughs> That'll be our Swimply experience. That'd be so good. Dude, we could sell houses. We'll just be like, I can go back to my real estate career. Oh, God. Did you do real estate? I did. Oh. I know. I, yeah, I bet you Top were Top agent that. over here. No. <laughs> really? I started doing stand-up comedy and was just putting shit up my nose. I was like, there are six bathrooms in this house. No one's going to buy a $6 million <laughs> home today. But I will make sure I test out all these bathrooms. <laughs> Good for you. That's incredible. I'll be right back. The elevator's on the other side. It's a five-car garage. Knock yourself out. What city was this in where you sold real estate? San Diego. Oh, wow. That's yeah. very high end. Yes, That's, it was. Yeah. Every second person, I don't know what the ratio is for men to women, especially not today, but real estate agents, every second person in San Diego is a realtor, probably like Austin here now. Yeah. And that's the business to be in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, everybody's moving here, so. Wow. Cashing that's in. a great skill that you have that. It was, yeah, I wasn't the best agent. It was hard. I mean, it groomed me perfectly for stand-up because. The rejection. I worked for free. The despair, the no money. <laughs> yeah. Just out there in a dress, putting signs out. At least yeah. it wasn't like a hundred degree heat. And right. You got to go. And you're like, oh, I'm packing up this house, locking every door, setting the alarm. Oh, yeah, I got to go pick those fucking signs up. Oh, the worst. And yeah. then it wasn't safe. I'd be there alone. And here I am. Hi, guys. I'm at this address from two to four. Uh, you can find me here all by myself. Come and get me. Like, doors wide well, open. Well, that's why you had to do drugs so that you'd be really ready to fight if anyone <laughs> exactly. came after you. <gasps> yeah, I'd have my fanny pack here. Brought the fanny with, like, my taser gun, my mace. I mean, Callie can't really just have your, you know, six shoot. Yeah. hanging out yeah the, a little different than texas in the yeah a little <laughs> bit different but then i started yeah bringing my lender with me because then it was like because realtors are sharks yeah you bring another realtor like well i talked to that by first oh wow i spoke to i had a conversation with him you didn't see it that so is that's like mine. comedy it's ridiculous <laughs> so then i brought my lender in so i could just have a buddy system you know i'm like this is a four-story home with an elevator i'm not gonna know pay attention who's going in who's going out like i need another person here yeah yeah so, yeah, I bring the lender in and then there was no competition because they're trying to chase something else. Very smart. Way. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. But um, it was hard. It was a tough gig. It definitely was not easy. It I does, tried. It does not sound easy. To, it I, pushed me into stand up. That's one of those careers I could just never do. It, not even close. But the people I realized I had to do a little like self work. I'm doing this industry a disservice because I don't want to fucking be here. And there are people that really love real estate. Right. They love it's it. It's their calling. Exactly. Yeah, they, they love it. Exactly. So I was like, I'm going to exit. Thanks so much. Had a great time. Not really. Now I'm going to go <laughs> talk shit about real estate right. on stage. There you go. And all the people I hate right. in it. And they're like, and we will leave stand-up comedy to her. Yes. That's because we don't want to do that. That happened to me. My first show at the comedy store in La Jolla, uh, somebody sent a mass email out. You know you invite people to your shows. Yeah. They don't fucking come. Yours maybe. Mine, I struggle. <laughs> So my first show ever, this is like my first year of comedy, my first time performing at the store. And I tell the office manager at the real estate brokerage, she sends out an email. She puts it on the weekly calendar. Lauren's comedy show at the store. There was a monsoon, which it never rains in California that night. The entire office came. My manager, my lender, my transaction coordinator. Were you? How did you brokers. feel about that? Like, were oh. you happy or were your jokes maybe like not ready for the office? 
I, it was December. It was Hanukkah week. And <gasps> our- In a monsoon during Hanukkah in December. Yes. And our company <laughs> holiday party, they called it Christmas, but holiday party was at SeaWorld. Yep. Uh, <laughs> that next night. So my show was on a Thursday <laughs> and the next night was the SeaWorld company wide. We're talking 300 agents yeah. at SeaWorld, which I was like, I'm really looking forward to that because I love roller coasters and I love a fucking buffet. So hopefully I was like, can you guys. And whales. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the, it was nighttime. So all the animals, you know, were. If I'd still been drinking, I'm sure I would have like somehow meandered into those exhibits. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, whoops, I didn't realize it was closed. <laughs> but no, super fun night. They let me go. I was like, okay, they can pink slip me on Monday. But when you're a 1099 contractor, I'm like, I don't think they can fire me. Yeah, true. So they all had a good time. At the uh, show? It escalated up to like the executive board of like the CEO and stuff that, you know, when we're waiting in the line at the buffet, like, I heard uh, you you told some jokes last night. Oh. I'm like, here it comes. <laughs> I was like, I hate this fucking job. I don't want to work here anyway. Fire me. And what did they, what was their no, take? No, I was still, they were happy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was fine. I think anyone admires people who do stand up because it sounds so terrifyingly hard. They probably wouldn't judge you for it, even if they were offended by what you said. They're like, oh, it's really hard to get up there. Well, that was like my opening joke. I'm like, you know that part where you invite people to somebody, something and, and they say they're going to come? But you flake. That's yeah, you guys that's did it all wrong. Understood, right? Why'd right. you show up yeah. tonight? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're all top earning real estate agents now because they show up. By God, they honor their commitments. They do. It's difficult to honor your commitments sometimes. I know. So your kids, how's summer going for them? Good. I have gotten to a place where I no longer micromanage my kids' summer. I think there's a place for doing nothing, for sleeping late. And for spending a lot of time on screens. So we sort of have, yes. I, I planned a couple of productive things. We went to the beach. So we we have things that are relatively productive. And then the rest of the summer, I'll just be totally honest. My kids woke up at 1 p.m. today and they were up. We were talking until 2 a.m. And I, I just, I, I used to fight that. And I used to feel like they need to get up earlier. And then I thought, why? Because that, that's, I'm an only child and so is my husband. So right. we, we've never really seen this done. I, I didn't even have friends who had big families. And so we're just kind of reinventing the wheel. And I guess this is wrong because no other parents do it this way. But I'm done micromanaging my kids summer. They they can sleep till one. They can spend most of their time on screens. And it, what, what's interesting is when I don't put when I don't henpeck them and put a lot of restrictions on things, they get bored of screens and they yeah. actually want to go take a walk or play badminton in the backyard. And the summers that. I was more on their case and micromanaging everything. Well, then they were like addicts for the screens, like whatever time I can just get to play Minecraft or whatever. So now I, I find it just works better for everyone that I'm just letting them relax and do what they want. That's the so, summer. and then you're more relaxed. Yeah. I, oh, I'm so much more relaxed. And mommy can write. And yes. Go be her mommy can badass write comedy. Self. Now, yes. Do my podcast and get ready for my tour. Yeah. It's it's really a very very pleasant summer. And I just realized I spent too many summers fighting battles that all all it did was exhaust all of us and add zero value to our family. I love that. Yeah. Just take a step back. Relax. Yeah. Tranquilo. Relax, people. Relax. So uh, the youngest remind me, I met all nine. six of them, didn't yeah. I? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, the youngest he's is nine. nine. Yeah. And the oldest is 17. 17. Yeah. 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 I can't believe it. Wow. Yeah. And they're just so fun. They're fun. That's the, that was a surprise to me. I, I was not someone who I didn't even think I would get married, let alone have kids. It was not an aspiration of mine. I was going to be a tech CEO. That was my plan. And I just wanted to I just wanted to be a, a single careerist person. That was my life plan. Turned out a little differently. <laughs> so I didn't have any expectations for family. And it's so fun. That that is really a big surprise that I genuinely enjoy talking to my kids. I They're insightful and they're interesting. And that's another thing. I, I don't put strict rules on the media they consume and things like that. And they've heard certainly some of my comedy that's that maybe normally you wouldn't say that in front of a nine-year-old. But in my comedy is relatively clean because that I do suburban audiences. Yeah. So it's just they're, they want relatively clean stuff. Um, but there's some stuff that's on the line. And I my kids go to all my shows anyway because my top priority is us just genuinely liking each other and, and having fun. And we have accomplished that. The, the kids like each other. 
we get along with them very well and it's it's fun it is it's actually fun i, I had so much I, fun at your yeah. house that yeah day. It's, it's fun it really is yeah, yeah. I, I i got to just hang out with all these kids and they were just so <laughs> sweet and loving and pleasant i'm like can you guys be my new family? <laughs> yeah yeah well you said you're having trouble finding an apartment yeah our house is small but you could live in the pantry easy access to snacks i you love got it the food yeah. zone yeah yeah right you're in the food zone yeah that's yeah. perfect yeah i i would feel right very centered yeah. in, the, in the food room. It's funny. I get a lot of heat on social media from people telling me I'm a toxic parent and I'm a bad <laughs> mother. And yeah, my haters are, they have a lot of time. But what's funny is I, I feel like on the metrics that matter, I like my kids and I like spending time with them. And I, I am doing a lot of things wrong in terms of the boxes that you're supposed to check. But I feel like the, the only metric that really matters is that they really enjoy each other's company and we have a, a pleasant house. I look forward to going home to my house. It's a place of respite yeah. for me. And that's that's cool, You know, especially that we have eight people in a three-bedroom house. That's cool. Does your oldest drive? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just one has a license right now. Just, well, the second got her license, but we're a little more driving education to be done before we really... She passed the test, but it was like, eh, it needs a little more practice. It, yeah. it, it is. Well, they say like 10 years till you become like an average yeah. driver. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm terrified on the road. I, I just downsized to a smaller car and I'm like, can anyone see me? Yeah. It's like, this is so scary. I don't, I don't like it, but it, I'm saving on gas. Yay. It's funny to re-experience driving through the eyes of teenagers you know, right. teaching a teenager to drive it's like this is very dangerous why do any of us do this this is crazy it is <laughs> and and then you bring these into it right because right. i remember my folks gave me a, a stick shift jeep cherokee oh, sport is wow. my first car thanks mom and dad and then cell phones became a thing and my mom's like uh no way in hell she's gonna have that and this was years ago yeah. uh with that, get her an automatic yeah, at least. Yeah, yeah. We're not talking weaponry, not a gun, <laughs> just a car. Chill the fuck out, everyone. Oh my god. Uh, yeah. So I, I mean, I'm just. I, they're sending me a device for my new insurance plan. It's called a snapshot. I'm like, so you're going to be watching me in my car. What more, is that? More voyeurism. They're monitoring for a few extra bucks to save how much I like if I'm an aggressive driver. If I slam on the gas, no way. And the and the brake and. I guess if I'm a good driver in that essence, it's the weirdest thing. I'm like, who thought of this? That's creepy. So if I'm gunning it and braking real hard, this thing supposedly detects it. It's on its way. I'm like, how do I even okay. plug this in? Well, if it saves money, fine. I'm just yeah. going to put it in my butthole and then I can monitor it that <laughs> right. way. Snapshot. Right. They'll offer you a different job. They'll be like, you know, we have we have some other work you could do for us here at the company. Yeah. That happens. I send out writing samples quite a bit just to get some freelance gigs. Yeah. One of them bit back from a Dallas number from Brazzers.com asking me to write for porn. And what'd you say? <laughs> I'm like... I just mean, writing, right? Just yeah, this writing, kind of writing, right. scripting, not this kind of writing. Yeah, right, right, not riding. <laughs> right. Be writing specific. with a W, not an R. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, he was like, "Well, uh, basically, you just we have this internet type of system, and you send in copy, and yes, you would need to be comfortable being on set." And I was pretty oh, to make sure they're actually okay reading my lines correctly. Oh, wow. You're like, yeah. So, no, the line is, I'm here to repair your coffee machine. <laughs> and you say, but I don't have any money. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Photocopy my ass. Can you open this pickle jar? I'm yeah. really struggling. Yeah. 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 I felt like you should have delivered that line with more uh, emphasis on the struggling. So, like, all right. Roll it back. Roll it back. Let's take two. Can you open my pickle jar? Man. No. Did you, so do, are you doing this job? Is this your new job? I wish. I was like, because eventually, what do you think this person said to me? Well, you make more money on camera. Oh, I of see. Course. Is that, well, you, yeah, because then they'd be like, well, why don't you act it out? Since you, I mean, you could just give it a shot. Oh, I see. Oh, that's scary. So, but I'd never heard of browsers. So people, you know, I'm talking to other comics about it. And they're like, we want that job. Send yeah, us the yeah, info. Right, yeah, all the Asana, other comics, yeah. yeah, he was like, that sounds right. We we're just talking about it at yoga class the other day. He's like, we all want to do that. And I said, I know, wouldn't it be fun if we could pow wow together and do this so like in a war room and just write for yeah. porn together? Yeah. Okay. So actually, I do have another career opportunity for you. Oh, great. So, you know, so my background, but before I did stand up, I, w I was an author, I guess sort of, I still am. My literary agent would like to think I still am. So I've written a few books. I mean, I know, I know the, the literary landscape. So the dirty secret of publishing is that the romance novel 
industry props up all other books, like all this Malcolm Gladwell, like the Habits book and stuff that you read, they're not really contributing much at all to the publishing industry. It is all the bodice ripping romance novels. And if you Google it, it, it's something like a multi-billion dollar industry. The amount of revenue that comes into this industry from romance novels, it, it's something like 10x the nearest genre. It is keeping, the reason we still have paper books mm -hmm. is because of the romance novel industry. And, and it's funny, my husband, you know, he, he's like very, he has this this very fancy career background. And he was like, I, I see a market opportunity here. I mean, I think I might quit what I'm doing and become a romance novelist because evidently there is an enormous market opportunity erotica. here. Yeah, so just write erotica and evidently you will have tons of fans and make tons of money. You know and then no that? one's going to ask you to act in it. Ryan does that. No way. Yeah, he wrote erotica. He did. And he went uh, under a Why do I totally <sighs> believe that? Why do I 100%... I am surprised that I'm not surprised. Yeah, I'll have to send you some. It's pretty good. He's got one called The Bro Job. Uh, two frat guys going at it. Uh, what is it? There's so many. I'm forgetting all the names. They're ridiculous. But it, yeah, that's what an English lit major will get you. So he has, he has a pen name. His name that's is Jade incredible. Ryan. That's incredible. Yeah, it's pretty rad. He was selling. It's on Amazon. Kill Tony talked about it too. Like that all came out in the interview that, hey, it's a pretty cool revenue stream. Oh. It's incredible. It's pretty damn good stuff. One time I was so pissed that my book was being beaten out by a book with a very similar name. It was something on Amazon. Wouldn't that be great if that were Ryan's book that was like crushing mine in the Amazon rankings? Well, let's find out. That Yeah. Yeah. Well, mine's like ranked 50 gazillion. Yeah. Okay. So what is his? I what, wish what I could. His... I, I'm going to look it up right now because What's the his names. Pen name? Jude. Would you mind looking up Jade Ryan on Amazon and we can find some of these delightful titles? He's going to be so happy that I'm promoting him on my podcast. Jade? Jade Ryan. Uh, yeah. And it's an author. Okay. Let's say that's, let's see, Amazon. Oh, this is sponsored. I was confused because it's like, we're made, we're made of moments. Here A we go. A small town, single death. Okay. Uh, Twisted Sister. <laughs> No, mistletoe. This isn't right. Seducing young McStu that probably sounds like more like Seducing. it. Seducing Uh yeah, you're better. Oh at, yeah, like, click on where it says Jade Ryan author, because then that will bring up his that entire will pull catalog. Up all of it. Of oh, there we go. There we go. Is that it? I don't remember. One of them's about peeing on people, of course. Yeah, that's a good that's See, a sucking Mr. Spencer, that's one. Sucking Mr. Spencer, seduced by my dad's best friend. Yeah. No, or no, no, no. Seduced by my best friend's dad. Yeah. Look, it's got three and a half star, four stars. Wait, can we read that? Spanking soccer moms. C can we read one of these reviews? I just want to, because I wouldn't know how to, if this were a genre that I read in, I wouldn't know how to write a review. Like, how do you approach? Okay. Oh, there are reviews. Wow. Oh, the kill Tony. <laughs> As we speak. Great spirit. set, bro. A very a very short and hot story. I love older men with younger men. A very, yeah. Golden, okay, okay. Golden pony. Yeah. Cool. Do you guys, God, my eyesight is terrible. I thought I got LASIK. Guess not. So he takes got showers it. Wow. with wow. parents. Wow. Got you and kill Tony. Yeah, here. Just go, yep. So they're very generous with their reviews. Good for them. That's a very generous fan base. Yeah, pretty good. And it seems like they actually read it because they know about the plot. Well, he got some girl on OnlyFans to like read the stories in a bathtub. Wow. Yeah, I won't name who that is, but uh, yeah. Any way to get out there, man. It was a couple of hard years for live entertainers. This will be fun for whoever pulled that up. Next time they log into their account, it'll be like recently viewed. Yes. You know? It's perfect. Sucking Mr. Spencer. Just blame it on me at Ibble if any time there's anything inappropriate. <laughs> right. This is on a work computer. This yeah. is a good time to remind everyone out there, hey, Ibble fam and future Ibble fam, we're going to make Jen a future yeah. Ibbler. Right. That's for sure. This uh, platform is all about no censorship. So oh, it's nice. perfect for stand-up comedians. Nice. Not like you were holding back or anything. Right, right. <laughs> Yeah, we're not. There is no holding back. She's a clean comic, but not in here. Right. Not in this. Yeah, this is not a very clean well, comedy yeah, space. Yeah. Exactly. This is a well padded room. Yeah. No, one, no one can hear us. But yes, get yeah. into the conversation at Ibble. But we'll be back with Jen Fellow Eiler on 6th Street. 
let's talk more about this tour coming up. Yes. You leave right after Labor Day. Right after Labor Day, yes. And uh, it's uh, 20 shows, I guess 19 cities, oh something God. like that. Yeah. Uh, Austin, local show sold out in a day at Paramount, Paramount. State Side. That's very cool. So we added a second show. And um, yeah, it's incredible. It's I, I've never done a tour this big. I normally don't hit this many cities. And it, I think it almost wasn't entirely intentional. We just we were third hold in a lot of cities. And th so we didn't think they'd come through. And then they all sort of suddenly came through. And now I'm not home in the fall. So, wow. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Florida. Will you come home at all? all the, yeah. In between. Yeah. Yeah. I do. So it'll be like I the Thursday through Sunday run and then you'll come back on like Monday or Sunday night and then yes. head out again. And and I do I do quite a few weekdays because they're, they're, everyone's on tour right now. So it, these theaters are just they're more open on weekdays. And that's actually how I did my first tour when I booked it myself. I, so my the way I sort of launched, like made my comedy career official is that I booked my own tour theaters on a personal credit card. And because I didn't have an agent or a manager and um, and but theaters are half price if you rent them on a Monday, Tuesday or Wednesday. So my whole tour was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday shows the entire thing. I didn't have I had one weekend show and then the rest. And uh, so my fans are used to showing up on on weekdays for my shows. Get the so, sitter. Yeah. Yeah. Or bring the yeah, kids. Because yours is kid friend. Like it could be. What Most would you of the I some of these theaters I, I kind of have to fight with about their policies but a lot of the stuff i talk about on social media is how hard it is to raise kids when you don't have a support system so that's awful if they're turning away women without a support system who don't have babysitting for their children so what i've been doing and i i haven't publicized this a lot for obvious reasons but if a woman shows up to a venue uh with a kid or a baby and the venue won't let them in then they can sit in my green room. So word has gotten out a little bit that this what? is a free backstage pass if you just show up with a baby. But uh, yeah, because it my my first show as sort of part of this tour was in uh, Tampa at the comedy club there. I had fans who drove four hours, but they had a baby with them and they were turned away. And I was so upset. I, I understood. I mean, I, I get the comedy club policy, but I was it was a great club and I was very happy with them. But it, that situation just sucked. And What's funny is it happens at every show. I mean, I've I've never had a show where people don't show up with babies, which is unusual. Especially for in comedy. Florida. Oh yeah, someone brought, leave the baby in the yeah. car. We're yeah, going yeah. to watch this funny lady. Uh, yeah, in Florida. Oh yeah, absolutely. They they're just sitting the baby at the bar or whatever. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. just breastfeeding in public. We're, yeah, oh yeah, I will oh, do oh, that. That's in your green my room. fans for sure. Big breastfeeding in public people. Yeah, yeah. So uh, so yeah, they can just sit in my green room if the venue won't allow it. Yeah, that's so nice. I just have to say, yeah. I mean, it's because I talk so much about how women need a support system. I cannot turn them away. I mean, just not an option. Well, let's get you performing at Google because then they have the kid care area, right? Right, or like right, right. Facebook probably have all those. Yeah, I we'll thought drop and, the kids off and we can have a show. And my fans have so many kids. I've often thought I should just have a, a birthing corner. In the corner. I, I had at my second to last show on the spring tour, this woman came up to me. She's so, my fans are so polite, too. She waited in line. There's Because I always stay to talk to people afterwards. Long line forms. She's like halfway through the line, did not ask to cut the line. And when she got up there, she was like, I have to make it quick because I'm in labor with my first child. My contractions are about four minutes apart. So I think we can wait a sec to go to the hospital. And I just wanted to have you sign something. And I was like, you didn't even ask. To, OK, so first of all, you stayed for the whole show. But then you didn't ask to cut the line. Like, I think people would have let you go first. Like, you are in labor with wow. your first child. Wow. That's my fans, though. I mean, they, I, and she's not the first person who's been in labor at one of my shows. Oh, my God. That's my fan base. Yeah. That's incredible. <laughs> I want footage of that. She's like in the right. back of the plane on a Spirit Airlines yeah. flight. Like, I'll just wait. Yeah, I'll just wait. I'll just hold it in. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah, I mean, because some of my fans, they have like six and seven kids. So for them, they could just go, you know, give birth during the show just in, and be there for the just end. Just a quickie? Yeah, it's no big deal for Over them. Over at an Airbnb? They're, they're kind of in a routine. Yeah, right. They could rent rent uh, rent one of the pools, do a water birth. Water birth. Yeah. That's, yeah, yeah, with the Swimply. That's one of my jokes. <laughs> I, I'm going to have a water birth. So when the baby's <laughs> born, I can drown it. <laughs> That's dark. Yeah. Everyone thinks I'm just when well, now you sunshines and rainbows. Nope. Now you can work in a swimply element to yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, that's where it's it, going to happen. Someone else's at pool. someone else's yeah. pool, and they're not going to know it. They're just going to think that I'm coming to have a vacation. Yeah. Not going to tell them I'm, you know, expecting. Yeah. 
And this is, oops, sorry. Yeah. Well, oops. scene of the crime. Surprise. Yeah. Exactly. I yeah, mean, this home birth stuff, you got to be careful with that. That's a funny thing. It's like most of those probably end in abortions anyway. What, the home births? Or... <laughs> okay, now, they, they now this is, this is comedy <laughs> comedy stuff tonight uh, for the 1030 show <laughs> later. Yeah, I uh, I tried basically the home birth thing with my first. Did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah I did the no drugs thing. Terrible, terrible experience. You're a martyr. Yeah, no, I, no, I'm a control freak. I just didn't want doctors bossing me around, and uh, no yeah, epidural. Was, no, no, no. I was at a birthing center when where they didn't even have that. Yeah, I it was, was it a midwife. Thing? Yeah, yeah, did, yeah. The midwife was there. Why are they called midwives? Because like they never will quite make it to full wife. Right. <laughs> where does it's that never That's gonna a always question. a bridesmaid, never a bride kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, never yeah. gonna have mid, a baby. Yeah, I wouldn't want a career where it's like the first syllable is mid. <laughs> You don't want that. That's a new a good Gen term. Z. Okay. Gen Z. I'm hearing the word mid, mid. Yeah, a yeah. lot. Big insult. Yeah. What does it mean? It just not good. Just not good. Yeah. Yeah. It's, You're it, mid. It sucks. Yeah. Mid. Yeah. Like that song is mid. This new album is mid. So, so yeah, me, you don't like, want to be a midwife. Like yeah. mediocre. Yeah. Mid. Me, yeah. Right. It sucks. Yeah. Mid. Oh, there's a, that's a pretty good midwife. Oh, there's mid. a joke there for sure. For sure. Yeah. We'll write it together. Okay. All right. We'll do that. Oh, my God. So your first date is in Illinois. Yes. Uh, outside of Chicago. Yeah, I'm doing all suburban areas. So it's tough to... That, what would it, what do you do when, when you go out to somewhere? If you're in the suburbs of a big metropolitan area, do you name the metropolitan area or the suburb? We had a big debate about this because I'm in Rosemont. It's Chicago, but it's... I have suburban fans, so I hit the suburban locations. Yeah, they need entertainment too because yeah. they're like, we can't drive all the way into Chicago. Yeah, and no, yeah, normally I just, I use the metropolitan city name, like in Ardmore is uh, Philly. Okay. So normally I would say Philly, but my agents were like, no, the theaters really prefer that you say, you know, their, their, the name of their town. Well, like we did that Soul Joel's thing and that was in Royersford, Pennsylvania. Yeah. And that was outside Philly, but I made a lot of Sandusky jokes. Yeah. Oh, I, I was forgot. Like, That's where the was home that of where that Mr. Was? Rogers and Jerry Sandusky go Steelers. And is, I was like, wait, oh, is that shit. true? Are they really? But it's oh, Pittsburgh. Oh, <laughs> oh, OK. I yeah, forgot that that's I where think that happened. I feel people are very wait, Pittsburgh territorial. Or Philly. It was closer to Philly. Philly. OK, so I'm hitting both. Maybe I this. said go Eagles. I okay. feel like I got the team right. But then I'm like, maybe they're torn. I don't know. That was like uh, one of these comedians. She was on tour with Rogan, Ali Makovsky. I love this story about oh, it. How yeah. She went out and she said, what's up, St. Louis? And she was in St. Paul. Oh. And fit 15,000 people were there right before Rogan went on. I'm like, no. That's hard to come back from. But she did. And, well, maybe, I mean, maybe you don't even know. When I was in Charlotte, I called them Charleston three times. And I didn't realize it. <laughs> did not realize I was saying that. And any death so, threats from? Yeah, no, no. They were very friendly people, very friendly folk out there, and uh, they knew what I meant. It yeah. starts with the C H. It's a C. They they knew what Charleston. I meant. You said instead of yeah, because my best friend lives in Charleston, and I had just been talking to her, and I don't know. I just three times I said Charleston instead of Charlotte. Charlotte, yeah. North Carolina. It, it was that was that was the tour that I produced and booked myself. I mean, it was all me. And it was only the second show on that tour. I was overwhelmed because I was tour manager. I had to show up and go over the lighting rider with the lighting guys and do all the sound check and train the ushers. And so I had a lot going wow. on. That's how I forgot the And city you had name. no, did the kids ever come and meet you or your husband? Just like anybody on any so, part of that tour? Like, yeah, the kids, the, we had, the kids got to each in pairs pick which cities they wanted to go to. And that was fun to just spread out the map. And they'd say, okay, I want to check out. Charlotte, I want to check out Atlanta. I, you know, so they they got to pick. And now there were some cities where I didn't have anyone, but yeah, I would put my kids to work. I'd have my ten year old go do sound check. And hell yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was really that's cool. That's a that's an internship I'd sign right. on for. Oh yeah, they learned a lot actually. My I kids bet. are ready to be touring managers, and they were very helpful. So uh, yeah, but that but sometimes I was just completely alone figuring all this stuff out. It can be a lonely life out there. Yeah, it can. Yeah. You, know, you got to love being with yourself. You got to really love stand up. Oh, yeah. But and and at one point, because most people don't tour this way. And um, so I showed up to a theater and I was talking to the light guy 
and this was that we had a lot of issues with this theater. It, I, they were they were just not organized, and um, so I'd had to really enforce a couple of things to make sure this show happened. So I show up and I'm asking questions about lighting, and I said, you know, did you see the writer? And here's how we're doing sound. And they were like, yeah, and I, I hear the headliner's a bitch, but I guess she'll be here in a second. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, hey, I'm I've got coming news for you. you. Right, yeah. Got One of my kids you. is coming for you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh my God. That's so great. See, you can be a parent, just make employees out of your kids. Put them to work. Right, the child labor laws, please. Who cares? Who cares? You're like, yeah, they sell my merch. I make right. them make the t-shirts too right right exactly we just have a little factory behind my house they only work 14 hours a day it's fine it's, they don't need air conditioning I they mean, seem well rested i met them they're yeah. fed well <laughs> they totally they don't have any high maintenance dietary restrictions no. they were able to have no. gluten yes. and dairy and all those fun things yes um so yeah i get you here for another month before you leave is yes. that right september yes. 7th y'all uh this lady's tour is kicking off and I love the title of it. You're calling it, it's Minivan Fabulous. Yes. My first one was called Naughty Corner. And I did not realize what a variety of products Amazon sells until my special called The Naughty Corner came out on Amazon. And my nice, respectable suburban fans just typed Naughty Corner into Amazon. Because when it first came out, the algorithm didn't, you know, mine was like number 12 and boy, they, you know, my fans, I think, learned a lot about about the variety of what's for sale. Is that, that sounds like an erotica book in the making. What does yeah. Naughty Corner come from? I don't know. It's like the timeout corner. Oh. Yeah. They, like when you send kids to the, right. to the timeout corner. To the I had to do corner. that. Yeah. Yeah. But it sounds, yeah, I don't think we called it that. I, Go I get learned the corner. that that's a regional term. Yeah, naughty corner. the naughty corner. Yeah, so weird that punishment. Go and stand in a yeah, corner, stand, not right. at just a wall. Right. It has in to be a corner. corner, right? And Blair Witch Project. Yeah, the shit right. out that of is, that. Yeah, you're right. That is, it's very Blair Witch Project. Which yeah. this is years of stuff. I was yeah. like, well, anything but the bail, right? <laughs> well, actually, maybe on second thought. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. like, one of my jokes yeah. is my shrink says I'm traumatized because my dad used to spank me when I was a kid. I'm like, what do you mean used to? <laughs> Get serious. You need to be the one writing erotica. You should. I know. Well, uh, the porn, the browsers thing might have just stimulated that yeah. a lot. They were offering good money, but of course they're like, well, it's this much more if you go on camera. It's funny with all these people on OnlyFans, I think, because like I know some and I've Googled them. I've Googled the OnlyFans people. That's you on my phone. Oh, yeah. I it's saw, not yeah, porn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw it. It's no. just Jen. I was like, no, that's, that's this me, is Jen, actually. Yeah. Mini, minivan. Fabulous. New show added. So is the second show for Austin sold out? It is not sold out yet. Okay, y'all, did you yeah. hear that? Because yeah. it's in, in November is the first show at the Paramount Theater for Jen. And it said yes. Moon Tower on there. Is it affiliated yeah, with Moon Tower? Yeah, it is. Well, I, I guess it is. I didn't know that. But Moon Tower is promoting the hell out of it. Like, they are really, yeah. Yeah, it was like Moon Tower was on Twitter. Like, this show sold out so fast. We've added a second show. And I was like, yes, me and Moon Tower. That's absolutely. so rad. Yeah, so I think it is they the official poster that the Paramount is promoting says Moon Tower Comedy presents Jen Fulweiler at the Paramount. Very cool. Bravo, my Very darling. Cool. Bravo. Yep. So exciting. Well, I hope uh, I, I'll be breastfeeding a child by then. There so can go. I pull that yeah, card? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can. How many? Oh, weeks yeah. You do can I get have? into the green room. I'll just right. rent a baby for yeah, the day. Yeah, just rent a baby. They they have an app for renting pools. <laughs> Renting rent houses. Yes. Yeah, rent a kid. Oh, yeah. my God. I love it. You can do one of the fake babies like they had in junior high, you know? Oh, yeah. To train. Yeah, just bring one of those and then you'll get in the green room. Man, home ec. Yeah, yeah. Home, home ec class. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. The, the <laughs> things. The one of the naughty corner. Know, yeah. We're graduating from the naughty corner to minivan fabulous. And I love yes. it. Do you own a minivan? Oh, I own two. Oh, shit. I own two. two. Yeah, one for the first yeah. show. One yeah. for the second. Yeah, when you have a family that's that big, I mean, you have to just... They, I, I used to say, I won't drive a minivan. I'm going to get an SUV. And then you just give up on life and just get one. Can I live in so, your van if I yeah. get too poor? No, it's really nice. One of them? Yeah, no, they're nice. These are nice cars. And well, they're made for kind of living in. I'll yeah. take the one that you're not driving and sleep yeah. in that one. There you Amazing. go. Amazing. Y'all, check out Jen Fulweiler. Tell them where they can find you. Everyone on Ibble. We're going to get her on Ibble soon. Absolutely. JFComedyTour.com is my website that has links to all of my tour dates, my podcast, which I do weekly, and Instagram, all of that. Look me up on Instagram as well. I have a lot of fun. Your on book. There. And the, oh, yeah, I have multiple books. Just search for Jennifer Fulweiler on Amazon. Um, yeah. 
Mama Six has time to be an author, headlining comedian. I got to get myself a minivan. So <laughs> I got to go, y'all. And Jen and I are going to go have some fun tonight because I got her all the way down here from another suburb of Austin. So I'm going to I'm gonna hijack her ass all for right. a couple more hours. We're going to have fun. Can't wait to show you all this podcast. Thanks so much for tuning into the Juicy. Uh, love you all. Check out Ibble. Get in the conversation.